Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the 2021 Phoenix Mayor and City Council Inauguration Ceremony. For the consideration of others at this time, please turn off or silence all cell phones and electronic devices. Now, please join us in welcoming the Phoenix City Council, Mayor Kate Gallego, Councilwoman-elect Ann O'Brien, Councilwoman Deborah Stark, Councilwoman Betty Guadardo, Councilwoman-elect Yasmin Ansari, Councilman Jim Waring, Councilwoman Laura Pastor, Councilman Sao DeCicio, and Councilmember Carlos Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the posting of the colors by the Phoenix Police and Fire Honor Guard. Following the posting of the colors, we will recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Front! Post the colors. Ready? Post! Freeze it! We will now recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. You may now be seated. Welcome to the stage, Mani Yepes, to recite a poem. First Generation by Joma Ubem. Here's to the security guards who maybe had a degree in another land. Here's to the manicurist who had to leave her family to come here, painting the nails and scrubbing the feet of strangers. Here's to the janitors who don't even understand English, yet work hard despite it all. Here's to the fast food workers who work hard to put a smile on the family's faces. Here's to the laundryman at the Marriott who told me with a sparkle in his eyes how he was an engineer in Peru. Here's to the bus driver, the Turkish, who almost danced when I quoted Ramai. Here's to the harvesters who live in fear of being deported for coming here to open the road for the future generation. Here's to the taxi drivers from Nigeria, Ghana, Egypt, and India who gossip amongst themselves. Here's to them waking up at 4 a.m and calling home to hear the voices of their loved ones. Here's to the children, to the children who despite it all, become artists, writers, doctors, lawyers, activists, and rebels. Here's to the international money affairs for never forgetting home. Here's to the children who carry the hearts of their motherland and who in, even in sleep speak with pride about their families. Keep on.
Now, it is time for Phoenix's newly elected mayor and council members to take their oath of office. Please welcome to the stage Chief Presiding Judge B. Don Taylor III, who will administer today's oath of office for Mayor Kate Gallego. Now, please welcome to the stage Mayor Kate Gallego, along with her parents, Julie Nierkin and Jim Widland. <laughs> and her son, Michael. <laughs> Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Kate Gallego. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of the and, state of Arizona. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And impartially discharge the duties. And faithfully and impartially discharge the duties. Of the office of mayor. Of the office of mayor. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, please welcome District 1 Councilwoman Ann O'Brien, along with Terry O'Brien, Amanda O'Brien, and Thomas O'Brien. Judge Taylor will administer the oath of office. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Ann O'Brien. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties and impartially discharge the duties of the office of city council member of the office of city council member according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god thank you congratulations now please welcome to the stage district 3 councilwoman deborah stark along with Brian Stark and Corey Stark. Judge Taylor will administer the oath of office. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Deborah Stark. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And defend them against all enemies. And defend them against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties. And impartially discharge the duties. Of the office of city council member. Of the office of city council member. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Now, please welcome to the stage District 5 Councilwoman Betty Guardado along with Hector de Jesus and their children, David and Santiago. And please welcome Susan Minato, co-president of Unite Here, Local 11, okay. who will administer the oath of office. Over here. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name. 
I, Betty Guardado, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution and laws, and the Constitution of laws, of the state of Arizona, of the state of Arizona, that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith, and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, and defend them against all enemies, and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, and that I will faithfully and impartially, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties, discharge the duties of the office of the city council member, of the office of city council member, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, please welcome to the stage District 7 Councilwoman Yasmin Ansari, along with Bijan Ansari, and please welcome Fariba Ansari, who will administer the oath of office. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Yasmin Ansari, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. And laws of the state of Arizona. And laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And defend them against all enemies. And defend them against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties and impartially discharge the duties of the office of the city council member of the office of the city council member according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god congratulations now please welcome to the podium for the first time councilwoman ann o'brien Mayor, fellow council members, family, and friends, I am incredibly honored and humbled to be standing on this stage today as the new representative of the amazing residents of Phoenix Council District 1. I'm extremely grateful for their support and for the trust they have placed in me to be the voice that expresses their views on issues facing our city, to be the ear that listens to their concerns and worries about their neighborhoods, and to be the open arms that will welcome their ideas on how to improve the quality of life in Phoenix. As a native Arizonan who spent most of my life in North Phoenix, my family and I were drawn to District 1 in 2004 for its strong sense of community. And add to that the district's inspiring, beautiful, natural landscape, and we were hooked. Undoubtedly, this community had a lot to offer my young family, and it was only fitting that I give back. As a mother of school-aged children back then, I served on a number of committees in the school district to represent parents like me and my husband, whose desires were simply to provide accessible quality education in a safe environment to our students, teachers, staff, and parents remain strong. In a few weeks, my son will complete his college curriculum, and my husband and I will soon be proud parents of two Northern Arizona University graduates. While many of our friends have been congratulating us for the start of our relaxing years as empty nesters, I realized that I had more to give to the community that has been so generous to us. That is why I ran for election to represent Council District 1. This is why I'm here today. District 1 is on the threshold of tremendous economic development. We are excited about the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company making District 1 its home. Their presence will not only generate hundreds of jobs within the, their plant, but will generate hundreds more as other support, supporting businesses establish themselves in North Phoenix. As our district prepares to position itself as the next major employment corridor in the region, our community needs to be ensured that the basics, such as having a wide array of housing options, different modes of public transportation, and adequate streets and other infrastructure are in place and re ready to welcome individuals new to District 1. 
And there's the tra beloved trans transformation of our Metro Center, where I spent most of my teenage years working at Park Lane Hosiery, hanging out with friends at Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor, or catching a movie. It was definitely a place to see and be seen. Now that the center of my teenage years has closed to begin a new chapter, I look forward to taking part in its transformation into a kind of hub that will be appreciated, frequented, and enjoyed by many. Yes, even the tech-savvy teenagers of today. The Metro Center area has always been vital, vital to our district's economy, economic and social framework, and we want to keep it that way. Collaborating with Valley Metro Light Rail and surrounding local businesses, our economic development planning and zoning teams will be key to approaching Metro Center's transformation holistically. But most essential to the success of the evolution of Metro Center will be the residents of our district. These are exciting times for our community, and I want to ensure that constituents are a part of every step of the process. But let us be reminded that with various opportunities and anticipated growth on the horizon come growing pains as well. Homelessness continues to be a concern for our city, a concern that I hope we can tackle and find solutions with more, a more regional and proactive strategy. Public safety response times in North Phoenix also are a huge concern for our residents. With new businesses and residential developments being planned in the area, having immediate access to public safety will be a must. Equally important is providing the proper training for our public safety personnel so they are equipped with the knowledge to deal with this variety of situations. As District 1 gets ready to embark on this journey of establishing an impressive employment corridor, building modern infrastructure and diverse housing options, and having programs in place that support and enrich our residents, we will continue to return to normalcy. It is vital to ensure vaccines are made available to all our community members. In the very near future, we will soon be able to sit next to each other at a community meeting, discuss our neighborhood challenges, and work side by side to resolve them. And this is what I long for, to meet each of you, to determine together what is best for you, your family, your friends, and your neighbors. I'm grateful for the wisdom and knowledge shared with me by my predecessor, Vice Mayor Thelda Williams, whose impressive 30 years of public service are marked with notable contributions that have improved our Phoenix community. I have very, very big shoes to fill and very stylish shoes at that. <laughs> I'm eager to work alongside my new colleagues, the mayor and all the council men and women and members. Let's make good things happen for the fifth largest city in the nation. While we may not always see eye to eye, my hope is that our respect for each other will overcome any differences and lead us to make the kind of decisions that truly reflect all of our residents' desires. And I want to acknowledge this historic moment for the first time in Phoenix history that all the members and the mayor being sworn in are women. This is an auspicious moment. Finally, thank you to my family, the people who thought I was out of my mind when I decided to run for election yet again but are the same people who fully supported me when I got into the thick of things, and still do. Mom and Dad, I'm thankful for all your love and the many lessons you taught me, lessons like life isn't fair, and anything worth doing is worth doing right. And to my sister and brother-in-law who had my back during the campaign. Thank you to my daughter Amanda, who will soon start a new chapter of her life when she marries her fiance Jordan next month. Thank you to my son, Thomas, who will earn his mechanical engineering degree from NAU next week and begin the next phase of his life, adulting. And my heartfelt gratitude to my husband of 27 years, Terry, who's retiring next week after 40 years with IBM. You are my rock and my best friend. He even promised to drive me to City Hall every day if I won, although I believe he will find other things to keep himself busy. <laughs> to the residents of Council District 1 and the City of Phoenix, Thank you for allowing me to serve you. Thank you, Councilwoman O'Brien. Now, please welcome to the podium, Councilwoman Deborah Stark. First and foremost, happy birthday, Carlos Garcia. 
Mayor, Council, family, and friends, it is an honor to be reelected to the council seat of District 3 in the city of Phoenix. During my first term, I saw numerous accomplishments that included creating a gated alley program, ensuring adequate infrastructure is being built to protect our water supply, accelerating our pavement management program to improve our roads, ensuring two golf courses that were in District 3 no longer rely on drinking water to water their courses, enhancing recreational amenities in several parks in District 3, S assisting three neighborhoods create a block watch organization, adopting a plan for persons experiencing homelessness, securing the fu future of our recycling program, seeking state legislation to ensure the residents and the neighbors that abut sober living homes are protected, and beginning the process to ensure the redevelopment of Paradise Valley Mall. However, I know there is much to be accomplished in the second term to foster economic growth and preserve our quality of life. We together, the mayor and council, must work to ensure this. While we may not agree on every issue, I believe through mutual respect, we can do great work for our city. I hope to continue to address the issue of homelessness and seek solutions that truly work. I hope to see us offer the Gated Alley Program to all our neighborhoods desiring the alleys. <laughs> Infrastructure is the backbone of our city, and I will work to ensure we protect our water supply, improve our roads, provide multi-modal means of transportation, seek solutions for flooding, and build and enhance our communication network. I am also committed to public safety because they protect us. I am, one of the projects with regards to public safety is that we make our streets safer for pedestrians and motorists. I hope that we make, have a plan to adopt soon that addresses how we can make streets safer for all. I'm also committed to public parks, libraries, and the arts. These uses bring an important dimension to our city. But most important to me is serving the public with the everyday problems. Whether it's a pothole, weeds, or water leak, my office wants to assist you. Local government impacts residents and businesses in the most basic of needs. My office is here to serve you. You may not always get the answer you want, but we will thoroughly review and try to solve the problem. I'm extremely excited about the next four years, and I want to give a special warm welcome to the newest members of council representing District 1 and District 7. I especially want to thank my family who has supported me through this journey. I am very proud to be married to Brian Stark and to have two wonderful children. Thank you all. Let's get to work. Thank you, Councilwoman Stark. Now, please welcome to the podium, Councilwoman Betty Guadardo. Good morning, everyone. And again, as well, happy birthday, Councilmember Garcia. Councilwoman Stark beat me to it. So my name is Betty Guardado, and I am the Councilwoman for District 5 for the next four years. And I am... And I am proud to be able to represent. And I want to start by taking a moment of silence for everyone we have lost in the last year. On a personal level, I want to remember a person that supported me when I was running for office, a person that took the time to look at my background, to understand my background, and understand why was it that I was running for office. He was only always a phone call away. So for today, Wayne Howard, thank you so much for all of your support and for always being there for me whenever I need it. So please, let's take a moment of silence. Thank you. So I want to start 
I have a lot of people to thank. But first and foremost is thanking God for giving me the strength and the ability to do everything that we've done in the last couple of years. And from there, thanking my family, my husband, Hector, 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 David, David, Hector has different names. Uh, my, my children, David de Jesus, Santiago de Jesus, God, you guys were there with me when it was tough and it was rough. I don't know, Santiago, how many, how many strollers we went through as we went out there knocking on doors. David, you became such a professional, asking everyone to put up a yard sign. And at the end, you wanted to go out and do your own doors. And Hector, David, thank you so much for coming into my world, learning, learning how to be a campaigner, doing all the work it, that you did to being able to ensure that I was able to win my election. I also want to thank the constituents of District 5. I want to thank all of my supporters and everyone that stood by my side for the last, for the last two years. And then I also want to thank the people that made the magic happen over at City Hall. It, it was my team. It was Andrew, Michael, and Emmanuel. They took every single phone call. They returned every email. They made sure that they were able to give the answers, even though they were probably not happy with the answers, but, we, but they were able to serve. So thank you so much for, for our team as well. And then I also want to welcome and congratulate Councilwoman Ansari and Councilwoman O'Brien. You guys ran your campaigns with such grace and with a lot of heart. And I know that the way that you guys ran is the same way that you guys will be able to serve your constituents. I'm excited to be able to serve with majority women now on, on the city council. I think we're gonna make a lot of great things happen in the fifth largest city in the country. And I also wanna congratulate our mayor, Mayor Gallego, I know that it's not been easy and you, you did such an amazing job. Thank you for all of your leadership. And Councilwoman Stark, yes, we are gonna gate all the alleys out in the city, city of Phoenix. So thank you for all of your hard work. And the events of the past year tested us as a city and it tested us as a council. I don't think anyone thought that they wanted COVID-19. No one planned for the devastating impact it has had on our health and even our very lives of our families, friends, and neighbors. No one scheduled their job loss and the economic pain it has brought, least of all to the working families already living paycheck to paycheck. But as Robert Kennedy once said, all of us might wish we lived in a more tranquil world, but we don't. And if our times are difficult and perplexing, so are they challenging and filled with opportunity. The question that faces us today is, will we rise to the challenge and seize the opportunity? I am humbled and grateful for the support I have received from voters in District 5. In the height of COVID-19 pandemic, they told me about their struggles to pay their bills, take care of their children, and be able to be responsive in a good neighbor. The residents of District 5 have been the hardest hit by COVID-19, suffering the higher rates of infection and the lowest rates of vaccination. Many of whom work in the hospitality and food service industries, they never had the luxury to be able to work from home. You can't cook through Zoom and you cannot clean a room through Zoom. Many returned to work with companies that ignored basic health and safety protocols. Far too many returned to work only to learn that even after years of steadfast dedication and service, they no longer had a job. As it became painfully clear that workers were the last on a very long list of company priorities. Those of us on the city council work to allocate resources for the displaced, the jobless, the most vulnerable, and the working families who had never relied on public assistance before. While we try to act quickly to support our communities, the real heroes of this past year have been our city essential workers to our 911 operators, our park rangers, our firefighters, our police officers, our teachers, our doctors and nurses, 
our grocery store workers, our bus drivers, and our airport workers, and to all of our essential workers, I just want to say thank you, both as a councilwoman and as a mother. I am humbled by your example of service. I remember last summer, in the height of the pandemic, we began delivering pallets of water to apartment complexes around our district. I was touched to see the gratitude of families for something so basic, or at least that we all thought it was basic. But my heart broke as I saw the children who would run to greet us at each stop. They were hungry, they were thirsty, without safe, affordable childcare, with parents struggling to pay the bills, even when working two or three jobs. In the midst of a pandemic, where every shift, every single parent worked, increased, their, increased the likelihood that they would catch the pandemic and they would catch this virus. This is what breaks my heart. This is what keeps me up at night. What kind of city are we building for our children? This is the urgent challenge and opportunity that Kennedy spoke about. How do we rise to the challenge and build a city that improves the quality of life for all? How do we build a city where we can work just one job, where we can all agree with the simple sentiment that one job should be enough? And if we build up a city that works for all, imagine the impact that it would have. People would have the time and the energy to get involved in their neighborhoods. They would have the money to be able to support our local businesses. They would have the time to volunteer at their kids' school. They would have the time to register to vote and to show up at the polls and to participate in our democracy. And if we build a city that works for all, how would our neighborhoods look? How would our schools look? How would our streets look? How would our libraries, our parks, and our community centers look? How would our democracy look? On the City Council, I am proud to say that we have adopted a plan to address the challenges of homelessness. We also adopted a plan to address the crisis of housing. But we still have not adopted a plan to address how are we going to raise the quality of life for all in our city? How are we going to ensure that those who lost their jobs when our tourism industry came to a screeching halt are going to be able to return to work? How are we going to turn tragedy into opportunity to upscale our displaced workers? How are we going to ensure they are not punished for a pandemic that they didn't ask for? How are we going to raise wages for those that work in our construction industry and fairly reward them for their skill? How are we going to improve and expand the options for our parents desperately searching for quality and affordable childcare? How are we going to pave a road for our residents that give the best chance to reaching the middle class? The COVID-19 crisis has pulled back the curtains for all of us to see. Our community is broken in very real ways. Working people, those that do the most essential jobs in our community deserve the support of the city council. As we contemplate our city budget and our incoming federal allocation from the American Rescue Plan, we must act boldly. We must remember Kennedy's words. While these are difficult and perplexing times, we must rise to the challenge and seize the opportunity. Thank you to the voters of District 5 for giving me their trust and support. Together, we will build a Phoenix that works for all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Guadado. Now, please welcome to the podium, for the first time, Councilwoman Yasmin Ansari. Mayor Gallego, fellow council members, and residents of my beloved city. Good morning. Happy birthday, Carlos. My name is Yasmin Ansari, and I'm honored to stand here as District 7's newest councilwoman. I want to begin by thanking everyone who's here physically and the even more that I hope are watching virtually. This is not a Steel Indian School Park Zoom background. We really wish you all were here. Thank you to my incredible people-powered team, 
The young, diverse organizers who knocked on well over 150,000 doors to earn every last vote. Thank you to the elected officials, community leaders, organizations, and labor unions that supported me and knocked on doors with me. Thank you to my parents, Bijan and Fariba, my brother Darius, my extended family, and my friends who believed in me. This moment honestly feels very surreal in more ways than one. For those who might not know my family's story, my parents immigrated to the United States during the height of the Iranian Revolution. It was 1979. My dad was getting an engineering degree in Oregon while my mom was still a normal teenager back home in Iran. Then civil unrest broke out, school shut down, and my grandfather was jailed as a political prisoner for opposing the oppressive regime. That's when my grandparents sent my mom here so she could finish school. She often shares with me that she fell into a deep state of depression at the time, alone, thousands of miles away from loved ones, in a country she barely knew, surrounded by a language she barely spoke. Then if you go back one more generation, there's the story of my grandmother. I lost her a few years back to cancer, but I think I thought about her often and still think about her as this campaign process and now um, going into office has begun. While she grew up in Iran in the 1940s, at a time when opportunities were very limited for women, to say the least, she never let her circumstances get in the way of whatever it was that she wanted to achieve. She always persisted. She was a star student and athlete, when her father didn't let her travel to a volleyball tournament, uh, because that's not what girls did, she argued her way into going. And when my grandfather, her husband, didn't allow her to take an international trip by herself, she did so in secret anyway. The point is, there is an alternate reality here where I could have easily not been standing here. I'm incredibly proud to be the youngest woman ever elected to the Phoenix City Council and the first ever Iranian American elected to public office in the state of Arizona. But my story is not unique. And actually, the profound diversity it represents is part of what I love so much about District 7. We're a district of immigrants and self-starters. I've walked every corner of our district from South Phoenix and Maryvale to Levine and Estrella to Central Phoenix and I was never ceased to be amazed by the stories of our community. But ongoing crises, whether it's the unprecedented health crisis, a crisis of housing affordability, a crisis of economic and racial inequality, and the climate crisis, have, ex have exposed and exacerbated the deep injustices in our city. District 7 deserves its fair share of investment and attention, and I'm ready to be a full-time councilwoman who is accessible, but more importantly, ready to demand more for our district. Starting today, I will work with the mayor and the council to help lead Phoenix safely out of the pandemic. With the American Rescue Plan dollars coming to Phoenix, we have the opportunity to propose forward-looking solutions to tough problems that will benefit our most vulnerable communities. It's time to reimagine how we address food insecurity, improve shelter access, and housing stability for those experiencing homelessness, and jumpstart our local economy with direct aid for people and small businesses, especially minority-owned businesses and those located along the South Central light rail expansion. Now, we know barriers exist, whether it's language, access to a computer or internet, mobility. Our team is ready to go above and beyond to make sure that nobody in District 7 is left behind any longer. Community organizing will continue to be a guiding principle in how we engage residents to ensure that folks actually have access to these vital resources. But our efforts to tackle the COVID crisis won't stop us from also tackling the existential and urgent threat of climate change. Phoenix must take bold action both to mitigate our own emissions, but also to help prepare us for threats such as extreme heat, wildfire, drought. I'll never forget one of my very, very first door-to-door -door conversations in District 7 was with a resident named George Picos, who's now a very good friend of mine. 
He was lamenting, the first conversation we ever had, he was lamenting about the toxic pollution in his neighborhood and the rise that he'd noticed in asthma and lung cancer just within his own block. I refuse to accept environmental racism as the status quo. Harmful pollution disproportionately impacts low income and communities of color. But the good news is we actually have the knowledge and the power to change this. This is why I'm very, very excited to take an active role in developing and implementing Phoenix's new climate action plan. I'll fight for an accelerated path to 100% renewable energy and the creation of good paying union jobs to help get us there. By expanding clean and affordable public transportation, ensuring that electric vehicles are affordable and accessible to working families, planting trees and creating parks and community gardens in typically underserved neighborhoods, expanding our cool pavement program across the city and so much more, together we can build a sustainable and equitable and resilient city that's fit for purpose. And part of this sustainable future means actually tackling the affordable housing crisis head on. Thousands of our neighbors go without shelter every night and I've had countless conversations with District 7 residents who are a paycheck away from the same experience. It's inhumane, it's unacceptable. I'm eager to fast track actions outlined in the first ever Phoenix housing plan increase the number of affordable housing units in District 7, and prioritize permanent supportive housing across the city and the region. Together, I know that we can build a district and a city where everyone can prosper, where living wages and high quality jobs are the norm, where clean air and water are a given, and where no matter what your background is or what income level you have, you feel welcome and safe in the city of Phoenix. Thank you again to District 7 for the honor of a lifetime. I'm so excited to get to work. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilwoman Ansari. Now, please welcome to the podium, Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego. It's my honor to join you here today to begin my first full term as Phoenix Mayor. I want to thank the people who have gone on this amazing journey with me. My parents, my entire campaign team and City Hall team led by Lisa Fernandez, and all of the people of Phoenix who have made this dream possible. I join my colleagues in feeling the excitement of today. It's wonderful to, be, to make it official and recognize Councilwoman O'Brien, Councilwoman Ansari, and to welcome back Councilwoman Gordado and Councilwoman Stark. This means that Phoenix is the largest city in the country with a female mayor and a female city council. It's a remarkable group of women, but one thing they all have in common is they were all told, don't run, you're not gonna win, and they were willing to defy the odds. I congratulate all of them. It is exciting. Councilwoman O'Brien is a statewide leader in education and a bridge builder. Councilwoman Stark is such a hard worker and so dedicated to the long-term future of the city of Phoenix. Councilwoman Guardado has lived the American dream and her life story is an inspiration for so many in our community. And Councilwoman Ansari, they're gonna have to rewrite a lot of record books for her. She's still in her 20s. With these great colleagues and my returning colleagues, we know the best is ahead. I join everyone in wishing a happy birthday to Council Member Garcia. This is the team that will address the many great challenges facing the city of Phoenix. It wouldn't be a city of Phoenix Kate Gallego speech if I didn't mention that I would encourage you to get a vaccine and to remind people that wearing masks does slow the spread of COVID-19. But, but we know that the light is at the end of the tunnel and we have to talk about how we can start planning for how Phoenix emerges from the many challenges that we have faced in 2020 and even before then. Because of wide decisions that the city council made, we have a surplus which gives us the ability to invest in the future of our city and determine what kind of city we want to be. 
I hope it will be a stronger, smarter, greener, safer city. We have some exciting programs proposed, including the largest program that's a new program during my entire time in public life. One that will invest more than $15 million in making sure we have clinicians to respond to 911 calls. Even before COVID-19, we knew that mental health systems in this city and in this country were not meeting our needs. And I hope Phoenix can lead the way in modernizing and saving lives. We'll also address challenges around our environment. And we propose the first in the nation Office of Heat Mitigation and Response. It will help ensure that as we address climate change, the most innovative solutions are coming out of the city of Phoenix. We're gonna to continue to invest in our amazing transit system, our water system, and we're gonna invest in the people who power Phoenix. And it's an exciting time and I have great optimism. If you're starting a new business, whether it be in food innovation or a bioscience incubator, we have a space for you in Phoenix. And at the height of the global pandemic, TSMC, the maker of some of the most advanced semiconductors anywhere, chose Phoenix as its home for its next generation of microchips. As I watch my son play with iPads, he's mastered them at a much younger age than I. And I know that everything he holds in the future is much more likely to have a semiconductor in it. So I hope he'll remember his mom when, he, when I need some tech support. But I also hope he'll be glad that the jobs of the future are here in Phoenix. And so whatever his dream is, I hope it's something that he can pursue in this wonderful city I call home. It's a city that's allowed me to pursue my dream. When I began the path to run for Phoenix mayor in 2017, I was newly divorced. I had an infant. I was in the middle of moving. I looked around the country, none of the 10 largest cities had a mayor of my gender or my age. In another city, I might not have taken that leap, but in Phoenix, so much is possible. Hard work matters and people will judge you by the results you get. I hope to make that reality true for so many more people in Phoenix, to have a more responsive, more transparent, more equitable city. I believe the future is so bright in Phoenix and I'm so honored to serve as mayor and help lead the way to the Phoenix of the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gallego. To end our program, please welcome to the podium Temple Solio's senior rabbi, John A. Linder, for the benediction. Happy birthday. God of all people, God of all names, God of all understanding, we give thanks for the blessing of opening our eyes to this glorious morning. We give thanks for the lives of service to which our public officials have dedicated themselves and to the Phoenix citizens who elected them. We recognize the tension inherent in being an elected official. On one hand, it does boil down to a popularity contest in that you rely on the popular vote in order to serve. And on the other hand, you are elected by what you stand for. Sometimes the need for the former can erode the backbone of the latter. Council women, Ann O'Brien, Deborah Stark, Betty Guardado, Yasamim Ansari, and Mayor Kate Gallego, we celebrate your inauguration, this awakening of a new day, joined by fellow council members Waring, Pastor, DeCicio, and Garcia. Happy birthday. <laughs> to our mayor and city council, my prayer for you is to see the common values that bind together each council district in the city of Phoenix, to unite around a vision that sees and cares for all the residents of our city. 
We have seen you lead in this way in the face of one of the most challenging years for our country. With your insistence on following science and public health protocol, Phoenix has provided critical leadership for our country, our county, our state, and yes, our country. As we now begin to emerge from the ravages of the pandemic, your leadership has saved lives and our business community will return stronger than ever. The challenge before you is daunting and overwhelming. Each of you has beautifully articulated priorities for Phoenix, issues that go far beyond the boundaries of our city. I pray that our city council and mayor continue to work together in collaboration with all sectors of our city to sow seeds of unity where others seek to sow division. Of course, this does require deep listening and a spirit of compromise. It requires being able to see and hear all the residents of our community. I stand on the common ground of our faith community when I say Phoenix's success will be measured by how we treat the most vulnerable, people of color, our veterans, the homeless, the undocumented, the unemployed and underemployed, the incarcerated, our LGBTQ brothers and sisters, the mentally ill, the uninsured, and our fragile planet entrusted to our care. The decisions that flow from your leadership will impact the generations to come. Of course, the place of this inauguration, Steele Indian School Park, should not be lost on any of us. Yes, the choice of the outdoors was made in part to the ongoing precautions and best practices called for during this ongoing pandemic. Yet, as importantly, is what this park stands for. Its history is part of the story of our city and nation in our treatment of Native Americans, the First Nation. On this soil, the boarding school, like others across our country, that imposed assimilation at the expense of the rich Native American culture and way of life. That the city of Phoenix went to the great lengths to create this park with a bequest from the Steele family speaks volumes of who our city is today. We don't put blinders on to the tough but real part of our American story. We sit in this place that now pays homage to Native American history and pays tribute to Native Americans who gave their lives for this country, originally their country. The Native American poetry etched in concrete throughout this park beckons our mayor and city council and all of us to see the opportunity that honors our cultural diversity, a place of equal opportunity for all its residents, a city that treats everyone as created in the image of God. As the springtime desert wildflowers blossom in South Mountain, Papago Park, the Phoenix Mountain Preserve, so may the diverse colors you all bring to our city lift our spirits and give us hope. Councilwomen O'Brien, Stark, Guardado, Ansari, Mayor Gallego, and all of our city council, to you, your families, on behalf of our city and all people, people of goodwill, 
receive these ancient words from the Hebrew Bible. May God bless you and keep you. May God's countenance shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God give you the courage to lead with values, keep you physically and spiritually aligned, granting each of you wholeness and peace. As we say together, amen. Thank you, Rabbi. This concludes today's ceremony. Congratulations once again to Mayor Gallego and Councilwoman O'Brien, Stark, Wadado, and Ansari. And thank you for joining us here today and safe travels.